The journey to Bebianeha in the Upper Dintra East District of the Central Region was rough as most of the roads were ragged. After hours of traveling from some cocoa growing communities in the Western North Region to Bebianeha in the Central Region, I arrived at the village of Mr. Yakubu, who had worked as a cocoa farmer for over two decades. He, however, says he has little to show for his years of hard work. Access to fertilizers and pesticides is very difficult. Mr. Yakubu lives with his two wives, ten children and grandchildren who are of school going ages but have not yet been enrolled into any school due to financial challenges. When he's not on his farm, Mr. Yakubu will be checking on his cocoa beans, which have been left under the sun to dry for seven days or more, depending on the weather pattern, to ensure it is doing well. Mr. Yakubu says growing cocoa is not an easy task. He says the post-harvest process has a major effect on the quality of cocoa and on its taste. It's yeah. hey, I think. I caught up with the 30-year-old son of Mr. Yakubu, who also lives at the village with his wife and two children. Zachary Larry said that lack of access to finance and inadequate infrastructure are among factors that impede families of cocoa farmers who live in rural areas from breaking the cycle of poverty. <laughs> Our living conditions are very bad. Bebianeha has no electricity and so most families, including the Yakubu family, live their lives in total darkness, waiting to be connected to the national grid. We have lived here all our lives without electricity. Mr. Paul Yakubu says that low productivity, low incomes and limited development in farming communities have created issues that must be addressed to improve the standard of living of cocoa farmers. He therefore hopes to see a robust and competitive global market that provides strong incentives and sustainable livelihoods for cocoa farmers in the country.
was a rugged journey from Insonsia, Sefi Boakon to other cocoa growing communities in the Sefi Yosu district of the Western North region. The experience of travelling on these roads attests to the claims by road users and farmers that the deplorable roads are affecting cocoa production. These roads were constructed to facilitate the transportation of cocoa beans from the farms to market centers, but these cocoa roads are unable to serve the purpose for which they were constructed. The farmers say the state of the roads increased transportation cost. At Insuncia, a cocoa growing community in the Western North region, GBC News spoke to a field worker, Mr. Pius Bamfo, who works with many cocoa farmers at a rural service centre established by Solidaridad, an international civil society organisation in partnership with Ghana Cocoa Board. <laughs> The roots here are very bad and due to that, most of the produce are left to rot. Some road projects in this area have been abandoned, worsening the state of the road. Mr. Pius Banfo had this to say. Since February. Anka kwa we kwa ya we kwa anka. Anka mostly so kwa anso yehushi. Tia sra abain. Se obe boya omwayen. Na jume di na yidi no intimi enkosu. Mr. Kwekupong, a cocoa farmer at Insonsia said the onset of rains make the road some more trouble. Se mo be mo mo be mo 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 the farmers say they are yet to see the Cocoa Roads project take effect in some parts of the Western North region. They are therefore pleading with the government to reconstruct the roads and repair collapsed bridges linking these farms and communities to major trading centers to boost cocoa production in the country. Twenty-four-year-old Rebecca Mensa, a native of Diasu in the central region, is a single mother and works at a rural service centre in a cocoa-growing area at Agona Port, a suburb of Diasu. Rebecca is among six women who are responsible for the drying process of cocoa seedlings. She says the establishment of the rural service centre is timely. <laughs> With the establishment of the centre, I can now earn a lot for my family. Thirty-two-year-old Alice Tamia is also employed at the rural service centre and says she has been working at the centre for the past three months, an opportunity she got after she lost her job as a farmer. She says now she is able to cater for the needs of her children with her current job. Since I started working here, 
I do not struggle to fend for myself. At the Rural Service Centre, although men do the most difficult tasks, the women here also have tough roles to play. They collect cocoa pots after they are harvested, break and ferment them, and later dry them. We don't want to be a rural service centre that only uh, um, um, look at uh, men as uh, uh, people who can provide a better service as compared to women. They are also very, very good at this cocoa farming process. They add a lot of value to the chain as well. So they are active and they know um, what they do. So we basically want to extend our shores to invite women into the program. It has been a great benefit to this area because it is a Galamse area and most of the farmers, uh, about 60% of the farmers are uh, aged. Yes, and most of aged so they are not able to manage their farms. So you can imagine the number of farms that are left um, um, are left in the bushes. Yeah, so as we came, we are managing the farms for the farmers. Yes, and um, those who are not able to manage their farms also give their farms to Galamse operators. And this time, we, we are taking over the farms. So th those things have ceased. Yeah, and we also provide labor services. Because of the Galamse, they are not able to get labor. So we are able to organize labor from uh, places to manage their farms. So I think it has been the service center, Solidarida and Corrib have provided to us. It has been a great, very great benefit to the community at large. This is just one of the rural service centers established in almost all the cocoa regions. Under the Cocoa Rehabilitation and Intensification Program, Corrib 2, the rural service centers are established as a private sector driven vehicle to deliver production and marketing services for smallholder cocoa farmers. Experts in the cocoa sector say the rural service centers will create more jobs for the youth and women in the cocoa sector and also improve productivity in the cocoa supply chain. Under the Cocoa Rehabilitation Program by Cocoa Board under its shared program in collaboration with Solidarity. Now these women who are working right behind me have a source of livelihood and they can support their various households. For GPC News, Ofriwa Dako reporting.